Hey, what's up? I'm Liz, this is Blitzu DIY, and today is a day that many of you requested Android gaming benchmarks on the Asus Tinkerboard. Now, I benchmarked six different games to kind of get an idea for overall performance from all different genres. Uh, the first one, Asphalt 8 for a racing sim, Sim City for a open world uh, building sim, uh, Samuros 3 for detailed 2D graphics, uh, Marvel Future Fight for uh, an action, uh, fast-paced fighting game with really intense 3D graphics, Lego Star Wars Force Awakens for an adventure type game, and finally, Robot Unicorn Attack 2 for a fast-paced side-scroller and also for my own personal entertainment. Now, there were some other games I'd wanted to benchmark, but in order to have them run, I would have had to update the Google Play Store, which could risk bricking um, my side-installed Google Play Store, Google Services uh, apps, and I didn't really feel like doing that um, for the sake of this. I may in the future just experiment. Now, for benchmarking, I ended up using GameBench exclusively, since it's the easiest way to get all sorts of different performance metrics uh, on Android for gaming at this time. Now, the only catch is for a free account, you only get 30 minutes per month of testing available to you. So that's why this video is a little bit delayed. Um, but I, that also meant that I had to kind of keep my benchmark sessions uh, a bit on the short side to kind of budget time. Uh, so I kind of tested until I saw that the frame rate was stable, it wasn't changing too much. And I actually found that whatever frame rate I got when I first started playing the game, it kind of stayed that way. There wasn't a whole lot of uh, fluctuation, but for games that I saw were using um, more resources, I did test for longer just to see if there were any changes over time. Uh, so because of all this, it's not really meant to be um, definitive. Uh, it's more kind of to answer the question, uh, can you play Android games on the Tinkerboard? And let's answer that question right now with some numbers. Okay, so starting off with one of the beefier titles, Asphalt 8 had an average frame rate of 18 frames per second, with CPU usage averaging at 16% and RAM usage averaging at 248 megabytes. Although a bit lower on the frames than I'd like to see, it was certainly playable, and the game also had zero issues with my USB gamepad, a trend that continued in all titles that support controllers. Next, LEGO Star Wars Force Awakens. It averaged a steady 30 frames per second with CPU usage averaging 11% and RAM averaging 118 megabytes. Crispy and definitely playable. Third up was Samuros 3, but the demo version, since the full version of the game, has a price tag associated with it. I chose this game because of the detailed graphics to see how the Tinkerboard could handle it, and handle it it did with a frame rate of 59 frames per second. CPU averaged out to 7% and RAM at 174 megabytes. SimCity was very smooth at 31 frames per second. CPU usage averaged out to 12% and RAM averaged to 164 megabytes. Gameplay was also pretty fun with PC styled graphics, which I found to be a bit surprising playing on Android. Next up was Marvel Future Fight, chosen for its big graphics and fast paced gameplay. It had an average frame rate of 30. I did experience some dips during more intense fights, but it was always playable. CPU usage averaged to 11% and RAM at 190 megabytes. And finally, clearly the most serious game in the pack, Robot Unicorn Attack 2, a classic from Adult Swim Games. In all seriousness, I did choose this for slightly scientific reasons. It is a really fast paced game with a lot of changing background scenery, controls that have to be selected quickly and a score counter that continuously runs at the top of the screen. RUA2 did not disappoint though, with an average frame rate of 59 frames per second, average CPU usage of 10%, and RAM usage at 110 megabytes. I put together some charts showing all of the games for each measured spec. Look at FPS, we see that Samuros 3 and Robot Unicorn Attack 2 are tied for first with 59 frames per second, and Asphalt 8 has the lowest with 18 frames per second. For CPU, all of the games stayed fairly low, with Asphalt 8 having the highest, but not by much at 16%. Remember, lower is better here. This is definitely the most intensive game tested, so that isn't surprising, but also isn't that huge of a load on the CPU across the board, uh, proving that bottlenecking is not occurring in any of these tests. 
For Ram, a bit of a wider swath with Asphalt 8 again having the highest average of 248 megabytes, but again not very high numbers in general. It's interesting to see that LEGO Star Wars and Robot Unicorn have the lowest usage rates and Future Fight and Samuros 3 coming in second and third for the highest. And finally, to wrap everything up, here are all of the stats for all of the games tested, just to give you a visual idea of the results. It's interesting to look at correlations between all three measurements across all six games, as it also gives you an idea on the optimization that the developers have done behind the scenes, similar to PC gaming. So to bring things back to the original question, can you play Android games on the Asus Tinkerboard? And in my opinion, absolutely. Gameplay was really smooth on all the games I tested, even the ones with the lower frame rates. Uh, the Tinkerboard had no issues recognizing my USB gamepad and all the games that support one, so that wasn't a problem. Um, I do wish that there were more options to benchmark games um, on Android at this time, but there, there just aren't. I think that as Android becomes more powerful and the hardware also becomes more powerful and people realize that game developers are really kind of pushing the envelope, with this, I think we're going to see more options for benchmarking so we can see more detailed metrics similar to what we see uh, for PC gaming benchmarks. I think Android will eventually kind of be um, right up there with PC gaming as far as benchmarking goes. But overall, I'm really happy, first of all, with the Android distro on the Asus Tinkerboard in general, but also how gaming went. I was pleasantly surprised to see that it was a smooth experience and I actually never really gamed on Android too much so it was also cool to find that there are these really awesome games available on Android. And with that, let's go wrap things up for this video. If you liked it, toss me a thumbs up, leave any questions, comments down below. Are there more games you want to see? Do you want to see like a part two? Uh, let me know because a lot of the games I tested were because of suggestions. Find me on social media, links are down in the description. Thank you for watching, consider subscribing for more content like this. Until next time, here's some Sonic the Hedgehog gameplay footage on the Asus Tinkerboard from that new Sega Forever collection that was just released on Android.